Can we welcome Pastor Joshua Mills? Amen. Thank you so much. Would you bow your heads and just pray for the Holy Spirit for a moment. And just welcome his presence in there. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, move. Take your place, Lord. Come on, church, lift your voices. Just speak in tongues. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. How we need your presence, Holy Spirit. Oh, the blood of Jesus washes me. Oh, the blood. Come on, let's sing it again. Oh, the blood of Jesus washes me. Oh, the blood of Jesus shed for me. What a sacrifice. What a sacrifice. What a price to pay. That saved. Make me whole again. What can make me whole again? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, the blood of the Catalino, Rimbalinga di Bosa, Ambra Filego, and 
this morning and change us by your word thank you for the blood thank you for loving us and choosing us as we stand before you we need you so much Holy Spirit I pray that you will manifest yourself I pray that you will show yourself I pray that you will have your way let your will be done Lord we don't want to hear enticing words of man's wisdom We want to hear from your word. We want to hear what you have to say to us. And so our hearts are open and our spirits are ready. And we are hungry for you, Holy Spirit. Phil, help us not to just come for another church service. Help us to have an experience and an encounter with you. You can get slapped and you die when you become an ant. Number two, the other ants may not believe you. When you are explaining to them... That there's a bigger world than this. And that you guys are just in the kitchen. And they'll say, no. Prove to us that there's more than the kitchen. See, there's a, there's a whole living room next door. There's also a bedroom. There's even a big white place called the bathroom. And all the ants will say, there's nothing like a bathroom. We know a fridge and we know a sink. Because that's what we can see. And see, there's a sitting room next door. Say, prove that there's a sitting room next door. And you, have, you couldn't prove it because for an ant to walk from a kitchen to a, sit, a living room, that's, a, that's, that's a, a long journey. But that's what Jesus did for us. He came down into this dangerous world. He didn't need to come. He was up there in heaven having a good time. His dad, you think your dad is a big man? His dad was the biggest man. And he was fine up there in heaven walking on streets of gold. Angels used to sing to him. His worship team was angels. When he wakes up and he yawns, they they start singing. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And he'll be standing on his balcony receiving the worship. And then he decided, I love those ants down there in Manila. Ah, You didn't know you were the ants, did you? And he came all the way down from heaven. And came and died to save us. That's how much he loved us. Others. He was already okay in heaven. But he came down and died for us. And God wants us also to have this heart. The heart of Jesus Christ. Which thinks about others. And today I want to share shortly about the good Samaritan and others. Everybody say the good Samaritan and others. Turn with me to Luke chapter 10. Amen. Upstairs, are you with me? Wave at me if you're with me upstairs. North Campus, wave at me if you can hear me. North Campus. East Campus, give me a wave. East? All right, South Campus, give me a wave. Wow, everybody's awake. South Campus, you are my favorite campus. Honestly, I've been waiting to tell you all weekend. You guys are my favorite. Don't tell anyone. (laughs) Amen. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test. Because that's what lawyers do. Saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, what is written in the law? That's Jesus. What is written in the law? How do you read it? Then in verse 27 he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. This is Jesus. Do this. And you will live. 
Then this is the lawyer in verse 29. Desiring to justify himself, he said to Jesus. Now understand, somebody asked Jesus, Jesus, I want to make it to heaven. What do I need to do? Jesus gives a simple answer. What did you read in the Bible? He said, I read the Torah and it says we should love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, our mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Then the, the lawyer thought to himself, okay, I think I'm fine with God, but if we can clarify, I'm a lawyer, we like clarity. We want to know the terms of the contract. So the lawyer asked, who exactly is my neighbor? Because when you use the word neighbor, most people have just two neighbors, one on the left and one on the right, and sometimes one across the road. So a maximum of two to three people in the world I need to care for. So he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And in classic Jesus style, the answer was a story, and at the end of, a sto- of the story, a question. And he never actually answered the question. Classic Jesus. And this is a wonderful story. And in this story, Jesus Christ was revealing himself. This was one of the most prophetic stories Jesus ever told. And he was actually telling the man who he was. And he was revealing to the whole world who he really was in the spirit. And so he told a story. Can we have this, the scriptures up? A man was going on a journey from Jerusalem to Jericho. This is all of us. We are all on a journey. We are all trying to get from A to B. We are all trying to get from the day we are born to the day we die. We are all trying to go from here to there. And some of us get there and realize there isn't really there and we need a new there so we can go there. (laughs) Amen. Amen. If only I can have a job. And then you get the job and you realize the job really isn't the job. So you need to change there to go to another point and to go on another journey. And you need another there. You fall in this you fall in love with this young, handsome, curly haired, broad chested, well spoken, well educated. Now some of the girls are waking up now. <laughs> And you say, if only he falls in love with me, I'll be there. And then he does fall in love with you, and then there isn't really there. Yes. And you find out that you need more. And that's our lives. We are all on a journey. When I was in school, I just couldn't wait to finish school. And then when I finished school and I started working, I, I couldn't wait to go back to school. Because <laughs> I thought I'd be free and there'd be no more exams and wicked teachers. When I was in Sunday school, I couldn't wait to be free and come into the adult church. And when I came into the adult church, they were given out to work and I wanted to go back to the Sunday school. And we're all trying to find there. And that's our journey. And that's why the Bible says, pass your time of sojourning or your time of journeying in fear. Because our lives are a journey. Now, while all of us, this is Jesus revealing himself, while all of us are going on this journey called life, life beats us up. He fell amongst robbers and thieves. And this is because this world is not run by God. This world is run by Satan. And Satan is in control of everything that's going on. And the Bible says in John chapter 10, the thief, verse 10, the thief comes not but to steal to kill and to destroy. A thief doesn't just steal. He also kills and he also destroys. And so he fell in among Satan in this wicked world. And that's what happened to all of us. Job said, man born of a woman. How many of you were born of a woman? I don't know how the rest of you got here. (laughs) By the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Man born of a woman. It's a few days and his days are full of trouble. And Satan locks us up in traps that we can't get out of. Who taught a little child how to lie? I recently saw my my four-month-old daughter crying and there were no tears. And I said, this girl's lying. (laughs) She's deceiving somebody and she's crying for attention. There's no, there's no, there's no liquid coming. You can see at the age in four months, she's lying to make somebody carry her. (laughs) 
How did it happen? We fell amongst robbers. We were born into this world. Paul writes to the Romans and tells them, even if you don't sin the way Adam sinned, you're already a sinner. In sin did my mother conceive me, Job said. And all of us are sinners. And this morning I asked the South Campus, how many of you have stolen something before? And I'm going to ask here in the main campus, how many of you have stolen something before? All right. Upstairs, you've never stolen chicken from the chicken adobo soup. How many of you have stolen chicken before? You stole other things. I'm just doing chicken to make you feel better. Chicken. How many of you have told a lie before? In your lifetime, you told a lie. You were driving and you got stopped and they asked you, how fast were you going? You said, I was just doing 60. But you were doing 110. How many of you have told a lie? Somebody lied to you. You told a lie. Good. Now, how many of you have hated someone before? Oh, you were angry. And you hated the person. Lift up your hand. You got upset. Now, the Bible says everyone who hates their brother is a murderer. So, I don't know what's happening in South, East, and North Campus. But here at Main Campus, we have liars, we have thieves, and we have murderers in church today. And I have some pastors all suited up. Pastors, stand up. Suited pastors, stand up. How many of you have told lies before? Look at the pastors. Pastors, how many of you are liars? You've told lies before. Look at them. How many of you are, have, have told a lie? Oh, you just told a lie already. What's left? How many of you have stolen something before? Pastors and ties and suits. How many of you have hated somebody before? Murderous pastors are here today. Sit down. That's why I brought them, just to say that. No, they can go home now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all of us have sinned. And fallen short of the glory of God. And life has beaten us up. And before we realized, we've done so many sins. And you know, we all laugh. When I say, how many of you have stolen before? Some of you smile and say, oh, I'm a thief. How many of you have lied before? I'm a... Now, I'm a lawyer. So I know how serious it is. When you're in court and you stand up and say, yes, I stole. Yes, I killed him. Yes, I lied. It's not just a joke. You don't just put your hand down after that. In the courtroom, the next day is sentencing. And you have to pay for the things that you did. And there was this man Jesus is talking about in Luke chapter 10. Beaten up by robbers. Before he realized he was stuck in sin. And he had fallen short of the glory of God. And he was lying there helpless. Please take me back. And, and you know the Bible says they beat him and departed leaving him half dead. What a prophetic description of the nature and the situation of man. If you don't know Jesus Christ, that's exactly what you are. You're half dead. Yes, you're alive in the flesh, but you're spiritually dead. You're dead in your trespasses. And you're, you're living life half dead. Because you're actually on your way to hell where you'll be fully dead. And then, next verse. A priest, by chance. A pastor. Comes walking by, a prophet, a man of God. And when he saw the problem, he passed by on the other side. Do you understand? He passed by on the other side. He saw, can I have, can I have somebody come up? One person, just one person. Quick, quick, quick. All right. No, 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 not you. Yeah, no, I can't use Pastor Marley. He might not like me after. I don't care about this one. So <laughs> lie, lie down, lie down on the floor. He saw. He saw the problem. So, oh, no. And the Bible says he passed the other side when he saw the problem. Now, most people say he passed, he, he, he didn't solve the problem because he was selfish. And that's probably true. But the truth is, you can stand up now, I think. <laughs> the truth is, what was he going to do to help the problem? Man's problem is sin. What solution does a pastor have for sin? There's no, a pastor can't die for your sins. A pastor can't wash away your sins. A pastor can't solve your problems. And so the pastor passed around on the other side. 
and, and this was prophetic. It was a prophetic statement by Jesus Christ showing that the, 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 the priest, the next one is a Levite, and the priest and the Levites represent the law and the old law of Moses. The almost 600 commandments in the Old Testament and the 10 commandments that Jesus, that God gave to Moses. And how those laws couldn't save man. And the Bible says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son for sinful, in the, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That's what happened. The law couldn't save us. Moses couldn't save us. The rules only remind us how bad we are. That's why nobody likes talking about the Ten Commandments. I, it was the most depressing lesson in Sunday school. That's how not still, that's how not can. I was counting how many I'd done. And I was only, I was less than ten years old and I was already seven down. Yes. <laughs> and the law couldn't save us. And the commandments couldn't save us. And the religious men couldn't save us. And then comes, next, we see a Samaritan. Please move down to the next verse, verse 34, 33. A Samaritan. Now, who's a Samaritan? A Samaritan, I don't know what you have in the Philippines, but in many parts of the world, there's a lot of racism and a lot of segregation. And in Israel, a Samaritan was a byword. A Samaritan was a half-human. A Samaritan was from the wrong caste. He was from the wrong tribe. And he was not respected and not wanted. They wouldn't even eat with them. They wouldn't even live in the same city with them. They wouldn't even stay in the same town with them. And this person came by. He was not a Jew. He was not wanted by Jews. In fact, if this man wasn't half dead, he probably would have rejected the help of a Samaritan. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ is. The Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And that was Jesus Christ. He said, I'm a Samaritan. I didn't come in the form that you expected. The Bible says he came in the form of a servant. And he was disguised on this earth. And nobody recognized him. And even though we didn't receive him, he still came and died for us. And that's the Samaritan. And this was Jesus Christ prophesying to this young lawyer and telling him who he really was. And he told him, I'm, I'm, I'm that Samaritan. And then, this is amazing, he says, he bound up his wounds. And that's what the Bible says, by his stripes. By his stripes, he were healed. And he poured in two things. You know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is the story. I love this story. This, that's why I like singing about the blood of Jesus. That's why I like singing about Jesus Christ and what he did for me. Because the Bible says, scarcely will someone die for a good man. But God commended his love towards me, Joshua. That while I was yet a sinner, not when I had it right and not when I fixed it all. But while I was yet a sinner, Jesus Christ loved me and gave himself for me. And the Bible says, he poured in the oil and he poured in the wine. The wine represents the blood of Jesus. Paul says, I have received of the Lord that the night that Christ was betrayed, he took the cup of wine and said, this wine is my blood in the New Testament, shed for the remission of sins. The wine represents the blood. He poured the blood of Jesus in. What this world needs is the blood of Jesus. What this world needs is the blood of Jesus. What Manila needs is the blood of Jesus. Manila doesn't need more jobs. It doesn't need a better government. Manila doesn't need more roads. What Manila needs is the blood of Jesus Christ. I used to do an outreach in a prison when I was in university. This was a prison in England. And we'd have two services. The first service was a bigger service. And the second service was a smaller service. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I feel the presence of God. And the second service was just one line of people. They were the most spiritual. They sang all the songs. They said amen. They came for service every week. And I didn't know the difference between the two groups. And one day, the warden told me, the second group... They are the worst. They are the rapists, the killers, the murderers, the sex offenders. They are the worst of people. And I said, those guys are so nice. You know, they sing, they sing beautifully. They sing on key. There was this guy in particular, and he was, a, he was a pedophile. He was the worst of the worst. And he could play the guitar. And oh boy, he could sing. And, and the, song, the song he used to sing was, So close I believe you're holding me now. And I feel the presence of God has this, this criminal 
wicked man will be singing with a guitar. In your hands I belong. You'll never let me go. And he would play and sing and we feel the presence of God. And I thought to myself, and then there was another guy. He was just a murderer. He wasn't, he was just, just a murderer. Not too much. Yeah. And he, he was from a wealthy family. Very wealthy family. And his family would come and give him so much money. He was the richest person in prison. He was running a business in the prison. He was like Joseph, the chief of the prison. And I thought to myself, this guy has money. My money can't erase what he did. And he can't come out. Now this guy sings some good songs. And I can sense even the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he's, and he's sorry. But sorry doesn't wipe away. You can't just say, he's sorry, open the doors and open the gates. Sorry doesn't change what he did. And it's the same for all of us. Sorry, no matter how sorry we are, our crimes can't change our punishment. And our sins can't change the fact that we were headed to hell. And no matter how much money you have here on earth, the Bible says we are not saved with corruptible things like silver and gold. We are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so no matter how much money you have, without the wine, the blood, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, John is standing in heaven and he's, he's witnessing what's going on. And an elder, uh, he, after this, I looked at a great multitude which no one could number. And they were from every nation. There were people from Scotland, people from the Philippines, people from Malaysia, people from Singapore. There were people from Angola. There were people from Rwanda. There were people from St. Kitts. There were people from Jamaica, all over the world. And they were all standing there with tribes and peoples and languages. Some people were speaking English, French, Spanish, Tagalog, uh, 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 German, Arabic. Everybody was seeing. And they were standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And everybody was wearing white. Everybody was wearing white. With palm branches in their hands. This is the picture of heaven. I'm going to be there and I hope you're going to be there too. And we'll, be holding, we'll all be wearing white. And we'll be waving palm branches. And in verse 10, it says, We'll be singing, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Then in verse 11, it says, And the angels will stand around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and we'll all be lying on our faces. Well, they'll be lying on their faces before the throne, and they'll be worshiping God. And this is their song. Amen, amen, blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power and might belongs to our God forever and ever. Amen. Now imagine that scene. We're wearing white and we're holding palm branches. And then John asks, the elder asks John a question. Who are these guys? They look so holy. They look so righteous. They look so wonderful. They are singing in unison. They are from all over the world. What links these people? Are these lawyers? Are these doctors? Are these righteous people? Are they good people? Are these educated people? What links this group? And I said, sir, you know. And he answered and said, these are they who came out of the great tribulation and the great troubles in the world. And what links all these people from all over the world is these are the ones who have washed their robes in the blood of Jesus Christ. When we get to heaven, we'll be wearing white and we'll be holding palm branches, not because we are good, not because we are great, not because we we got it all figured out, not because we live perfect lives, but because Jesus took the wine and he took the blood and he washed our robes and he washed our clothes. In the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Who are these? And you'll see me standing there wearing white. And you know when I get to heaven, I I love this. Billy Graham used to say this all the time. He said, when I get to heaven, I'm not going to go into heaven because of how many souls I won. Or because of how many sermons I preached. Or because of how many pastors I knew. He said, I'm only going because I washed my sins away. In the blood of Jesus. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For we are saved by grace. Not by our works. Not by what we did. Lest any man should boast. God saved us through his blood. And if the wine was important. We wouldn't be here today. And then he poured in the oil. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 14. And verse 16. Give me John 14 verse 16. 
He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you for, to be with you for how long? Come on church, I can't hear you. To be with you for how long? The Holy Spirit, the helper, what's he going to do? He's going to help you. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and he will be in you. Now the next verse is my favorite verse about the Holy Spirit. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. The great Holy Spirit is the oil and it was poured out into the world to help us or we will be left as orphans. If you know any orphans, they have no direction, they have no provision, they have no help, they have no guidance and they are alone in this life. But the Bible tells me that God has given us His Spirit and our spirits cry within us, Abba Father, because we are not orphans and we are not alone and we are not comfortless and we don't, we don't lack guidance, we lack no good thing because of the presence of the oil and the presence of the Holy Spirit. C.O.P., are you with me today? Yeah. And so this was Jesus Christ prophesying. And the Bible says he bound his wounds. Back to Luke 10. He bound his wounds and he poured in the oil and he poured in the wine. Then look at this. He wasn't done. He set him on his own donkey. Jesus came down from the donkey. Jesus was already riding the donkey. He was already up in heaven. But he came all the way down. And then we, who were lying on the ground, wounded and hopeless, were put on the donkey. And the Bible says, He who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. And God exchanged places with us. And and you need to understand, Jesus took your place. You need to understand, Jesus took your place. You were sentenced to die. And Jesus took your place. He knew no sin. He knew no sin. But he became sin. He became sin. He became sin that we might be the righteousness of God. Now, the story gets weird here. Because he's answering the question of a lawyer. And the lawyer's question is, who is my neighbor? And the story is enough to answer the lawyer's question. But Jesus goes on to talk about something else which had nothing to do with everything that the lawyer asked him about. He says, Jesus is still prophesying. He says, I brought him to an inn, a community. A place. He was talking about the church. And he said, I, when I saved them, I brought them to us, the church. The inn is already set up. We were also brought in from the road. And now we set up our own institution. And everything is fine in the inn. There's air conditioning, there's Wi Fi, there's movies on demand, there's breakfast, and the inn is working. And Jesus brings in yet another soul. And he says, he took out two denarii. Jesus financed the church. Jesus bought the church a building. Jesus bought the church church an air conditioner. He bought the church some instruments. He took out some money and financed the church. And said, everybody say, take care of him. Take care of I can't hear you. Take care of him. And the church, the church will ask, the church will ask, the church will ask, who is he? And Jesus would respond. Everybody say, take care of him. Yeah. Which part of Manana does he live in? And Jesus would say, take care of him. I can't hear you say, take care of him. Lord, how long are we going to take care of him? him. Everybody say, "Take take care of him. The church was set up to take care of the people who Jesus saved and who Jesus brought in. That is our job, to take care. Now, 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 the man is unconscious. He's half dead. He doesn't know what has been done. Oh, Jesus. He doesn't know what has been done for him. 
He doesn't know that he was picked up on the side of the road. He doesn't know that Jesus traded places with him and put him on his horse. He doesn't know that the blood washed away his sins. He doesn't know that he has the free gift of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And he's going to wake up tomorrow morning and Jesus is gone. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you might be also. So Jesus is not going to be around tomorrow morning. And it's the job of the inn and the job of the church to inform the people that Jesus died for. And the people that Jesus gave his life for. That Jesus loves you and Jesus did the highest and paid the highest price for you. That's the work of the inn and that's the work of the church. That's why we have two denarii. But sometimes the inn takes the two denarii and starts a business. Takes the two denarii and becomes a marriage club. Takes the two denarii and becomes a marketing institution. And forgets that the whole reason why Jesus bankrolled the inn and the whole reason why Jesus blessed us, this building is two denarii. These chairs are two denarii. The great pastors you have are two denarii. All the blessings we have in our lives are two denarii. And the reason Jesus took out that money was so we would tell the wounded man when he finally came to his senses that Jesus loves you and he died for you. And if only we can convince him not to leave the inn because in a few days time he told us he's coming back. And I tell you this Jesus says and whatever you spend and whatever you do for others and whatever you do for that man lying on the road which goes into your expense when I return there is a crown for soul winners when Jesus Christ comes back home there is a reward for working for God and for spending money and spending time and spending effort to win the loss for Jesus Christ there is a reward there's a reward take care of him And whatever you spend, when I come back, when I come back, I can't wait to get to heaven. I can't wait to get to heaven where my reward is for working for Jesus Christ. I am part of the inn and I'm welcoming invalids and I'm welcoming half dead people every day. And I want to spend every moment of my life welcoming more people into the inn until we have a great big inn full of people who Jesus died for, full of people covered in the oil and covered in the wine. That's my life's work and that's your life's calling. COP, are you with me? Whatever you spend, I will repay when I come back. And how could we not? How could we not? You know the sad part? Sometimes the wounded man wakes up in the inn, gets a job in the inn, and forgets that he was also brought in from the road. And another guy is brought in from the road, and he forgets that you were just like that. And we forget what was done for us and what Jesus did for us. Many people are not aware of the price that Jesus paid for all of us. I would have gone to hell. You know, few people like me. Few people like me. I notice people who like me because few people like me. But God commended his love to me. That while I was yet a sinner, Jesus loved me. And Jesus prophesied a great prophecy to this man and explained who he was. And showed us what the church is supposed to be. The church is supposed to care about others. But when you forget what Jesus did for you personally, you forget why you're here. And you forget how serious our faith is. And that's why I love that's why I love the song we were singing, the blood of the lamb. What a sacrifice. Can I have the keyboardist? What a sacrifice that saved my life. The blood is my victory. What a sacrifice. Jesus could have seen us lying on the side of the bed of the road and just stepped aside and moved on to another side. But when he saw me lying there, you know, I love the moment on the cross when Jesus is about to die. And he looks down. 
are the soldiers and his mom and the, the Israelites who crucified him and the people who didn't believe in him. But he looked a little further than that and looked down the centuries and down the years and he saw me, Joshua, born into sin and born hopeless. And he said, Father, forgive him. He saw me on that cross and said, Father, forgive him. He doesn't know what he's doing. Remembering what Jesus has done for us is supposed to... You know, the church... Keep playing for me, brother. The church... The church... The church has to realize the price that Jesus paid. And until we do, we'll never go out. We'll stay in. And the church is shrinking all over the world because nobody wants to go out. And even when we go out, the church turns against it. When the pastor announces a crusade, nobody wants to give or support or show up or help. And just a few people keep serving God. And most people keep their hand off the plow because most people don't care. And in Matthew chapter 9, in verse 10, Jesus is sitting with publicans and sinners, tax collectors and sinners, and he was reclining with them. He left the comfort of Pharisees and religious people and the church and the religious setting and went out to be with sinners. And the, in the next verse, the Pharisees criticized him and said, why does your teacher eat with bad people? Why is he always going out? Why don't we just stay in the church and keep preaching? Why don't we just keep talking to ourselves, encouraging ourselves, massaging our marriages, building our businesses, having business seminars, and just looking after ourselves? Why is he going out to sinners and hopeless and worthless people? And then Jesus said something I never understood till recently. He says, those who are well have no need of physician, but those who are sick. And then he said, go see what this means. Go and learn what this means. I, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus was actually quoting the great prophet Hosea. He was referring to Hosea, a great prophet, and he knew he was talking to religious people. And they would know what it meant. Because the Old Testament was different from the new testament in the old testament the prophets were different the prophets actually had to act out their prophecies and hosea is one of the amazing stories which i've been studying for a number of weeks now and hosea was told by god go marry a prostitute go marry a prostitute And Hosea goes and obeys God and marries a prostitute. Go put your hands together for Hosea because I don't think I could have done it. And and he marries her. Her name is Goma. And he marries her. And for three years, at, at least three years, everything is fine. They have three children. And one day he wakes up and Goma is gone. She's no longer in the house. The prostitute is gone. She's disappeared. He searches around the house and he doesn't find where she is and she's gone at that point i would have said you did your part it's done but then in hosea chapter 3 the word of god comes back again and god says go back go find your wife and marry her again and he says hosea chapter 3 verse 1 and he says hosea chapter 3 verse 1 says go to uh, to love a woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress Even as the Lord, so I'm going to show you how much I love my people and how much I care for them. Love an adulteress and I will show you how I love the children of Israel. Even though they have gone after other gods and even though they don't love me and they don't believe in me and they don't know me, you go after your prostitute wife and I'm going to show you how much I love my people. This is 700 years before Jesus Christ. And God is revealing himself again in the prophetic and showing how much he loves people. And so Goma goes to the prostitute section, the red light district in town. Prophet Hosea. Shameful, disgraced, hurt. And he's asking around, asking prostitutes, probably ask the few guys who have been with him. Your wife is down there. Keep going. Go down and walk left. I saw her standing there about an hour ago. Yeah, I saw her with a client three hours ago. She's down there. Go find your wife. And Hosea walks through the dirty streets. 
Just like Jesus walked through the death of this world looking for the one whom he loved. He said, behold, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That was Jesus Christ walking through the dirty streets where he never belonged and where the Son of God should never be. And there he was. That's why we sing, what a sacrifice that saves my life. The blood, it is my victory. Now, he finds Goma. And we see in verse 2, Hosea chapter 3, please leave the scripture up. Oh, Hosea chapter 3 verse 2, he has to buy her back. Now oh, this is going to blow your mind. I discovered, I discovered the price. You know, in the, in the, book, of, in the book of Exodus, it gives the price of a slave. And the price of a slave is 30 pieces of silver, which is exactly the price that Judas sold Jesus for. Now, this is 15 shekels of silver, but the homer and the lecher, that's the homer and the half of barley, also cost 15 shekels of silver. And when you put that together, that's exactly 30 pieces of silver, which was the price that Jesus was sold for. And he exchanged places with us. And he was sold instead of us. And he said, you were sold for nothing. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 3. You were sold for nothing. And you will be redeemed with that money. And there Goma stands, a prostitute. And her husband has to buy her back from a pimp. And buy back what is already his. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the things on the earth, including us, we belong to God. But he had to purchase what he had already created again. But God says, go back for Goma because I'll show you how much I love my people. I'll show you how much I love my people. I hope you're not tired of my story. Now, he begins to renew his vows in verse 4. Go, go back to Hosea chapter 3, verse 3. You must dwell for many days. You will not play the whore or belong to another man. I will be with you. And he renews his vows with his prostitute wife. There's no guarantee she won't go back, by the way. And in verse 4, he begins to prophesy. The people of Israel dwell many days without a king or a prince, without sacrifice or pillar, ephod or household gods. Then in verse 5 he says, he prophesies about Jesus. The children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. He's not talking about David because David is already dead. He's talking about the son of David, the seed of David, which is Jesus Christ. And he says they will find Jesus their king and they will come to fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. This is the love of Jesus. This is the love of God. Overwhelming, reckless, dangerous, nonsensical, stupid love of God for us. It sinks home when you realize you are Goma. When you realize you are the prostitute. And Jesus died for you. When you realize how bad you are, it sinks home. When it sinks home, First John chapter 4, verse 10, when it sinks home, this is what happens. This is love. Not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be an exchange for our sins. And our reaction is in verse 11. Our reaction, beloved, if God so loved us, it only makes sense that we love other people. And when, when Hosea held his wife's hand and led her out of the red light district, out of bondage, out of fear, and brought her back home to a warm bed and hot food. It's Gomez's job to remember the other Gomez standing in the red light district who you walked away from. It's Gomez's job to remember Jesus loved us and gave himself and to remember where you came from and how many more people need to hear about Jesus Christ. I grew up in a Christian family. I grew up never really understanding the price I knew the story I didn't understand the price 
until one day I realized how bad I am and how Jesus died for me not for us he died for me and it made me give up my life to tell the world about the love of Jesus Christ and it should do the same for you oh the blood of the lamb Just stand to your feet with me. The blood of the Lamb, the precious blood of the Lamb. What a sacrifice! What a sacrifice! Save my life. Jesus, oh the blood of Jesus, oh the blood of Jesus. accident and his leg broke in two or three places down his leg and he was lying in the hospital and the doctors told us the blood vessels are constricted constricted in a number of places and the blood isn't flowing all the way down to the toes we prayed and we hoped and we spoke best medical care, best the doctors could do. But the blood wouldn't go down to the toes. And so the foot turned black and it began to die. And the doctors came to see us and said they have to cut off the leg now because the foot is dead. What we don't realize is wherever the blood doesn't flow is dead. Whichever part of this country, this city, this continent the blood doesn't get to it's going to die and be cut off and burnt whichever part of your family the blood doesn't cover is going to die and be burnt whoever you work with at work if the blood hasn't reached down to where they are they are hopeless and this blood is our duty this blood is our calling to hold the blood of Jesus and to share it around the world and to tell the world, young people, this is our calling. God is calling many people here to take the blood of Jesus around the world, to spend your life and to spend your days, whether it works or it doesn't work, whether it's good or it's not good, to make an attempt to do something for God. Because it was done for us and because Jesus loved us and saved us and our response is to love one another and to love others and to do something for others. The blood, what a sacrifice. What a sacrifice. He didn't have to. There was no reason. 
He just loves us. And the Bible doesn't give us any reason for his love. It just says he so loved the world. He so loved us. He's so in love with us. And our only response is to say, you love me, Jesus? I take your word. I take your blood. I take your oil around the world. And I tell the world what you did for me. Oh, the blood. It's our victory. I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. And before we go home, I... You're here and the blood of Jesus hasn't washed away your sins. You want to experience the blood. Jesus will change. Jesus is not a concept. He's not a subject. He's a person. He will change your life. Jesus will change your life. Jesus doesn't make your life more boring. Jesus doesn't make your life more painful. Jesus Christ will change your life. I met a lot of people. I met a lot of different types of people. I met important people, less important people. I met famous people. I met rich people. I met poor people. I met all kinds of people. But the only person I met that changed my life was Jesus Christ. And you're here today. You want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. Pastor, pray with me. I need the blood to wash away my sins. If the blood doesn't reach me, I'm going to die and be cut off and be burnt away. Pastor, pray with me. You're here like that. I want you to lift up your right hand where you're standing. Pastor, pray with me. I need Jesus. I want the blood to wash away my sins. I want the blood to to make me whole again. I want the blood to transform and change me. Lift up your hand. High in the sky, I choose Jesus. Introduce me to Jesus, Pastor. I can see he changed your life. Help him change my life. Lift up your right hand or your left hand or anything you have and lift it high above your head and say, I choose Jesus. You lifted your hand, do one more thing. Come all the way down to the altar. We want to pray with you and I want you to experience Jesus. Right here, right now, not tomorrow, not next week. The blood of Jesus will transform your life. Come on. Oh, the blood of Jesus washes me. Come all the way down. I need Jesus. Come. Oh, the blood of it Jesus shed for me. What a sacrifice. What a sacrifice that saved my life. Yes, the blood Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to a new life, come to a new destiny, come all the way, all the way from the back, come to Jesus, balconies, you can stay in the aisle, stay in the front aisle, all campuses, you want to meet Jesus, come all the way down to the altar, you're upstairs, stay in the middle aisle, the front. Come on, church. Lift your hands and celebrate the blood of Jesus. pray after me. The whole church, please bow your heads, close your eyes. From the bottom of your heart, say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Heavenly Father. I come to you today. I come to you today. Just as I am. Just as I am. 
Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. Lord, Lord I, I know that, that I'm a sinner. sinner. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. One day. One day. I'm coming to heaven. I'm coming to heaven. To be with you. To be with you. Satan. Satan, I will not serve you. I will not serve you. I will not follow you. I will not follow from you. today. From today, I'm saved. I'm saved. I have a new life. I have a new life. I'm born again. I'm born again. Say so thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. For saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Um, no, this way. Pastor, hey, before you come up, I wanted to pray with, with a group. What can we do with these people in the meantime? Bad time. They'll come back? All right. Guys, you'll come back in a second. You can, you can go back to your seats. You come back. Right? Signs. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. Now, I want to pray for... I don't know which group it is, but pastors, young pastors, young leaders, young workers, I want to pray. Young pastors, young leaders, young workers, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. God is pouring out His oil. God is pouring out His oil. You receive power when the Holy Spirit comes and you'll be witnesses. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Come quickly, I want to pray for you. Past, young pastors, young leaders of this church, of this church. Young pastors, young leaders of this church, come, I want to pray with you. Jesus. Holy Spirit, moving now. Make my life whole again. Spirit move over me, anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Church, lift your voices, begin to speak in tongues. Come on, speak in tongues, speak in tongues. All over this place. Young leaders, God is filling you with the Holy Spirit. 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 The, Holy Spirit. the inn. God is anointing the inn to reach out and to do more. Anointing for anointing. Come on, let's sing. Lord, I offer my life to you. Lord, I offer my life to you. Everything I've been through. Use it for your glory. Use it for your glory. Lord, I offer my days to you. Lifting my praise to you. As a pleasing sacrifice. As a pleasing sacrifice. I lay them down before you, oh Lord, all my regrets, all my acclaims, all my acclaims, the joy and the pain, the joy and the pain, I'm making to
been through. Use it for your glory. Receive the Holy Spirit. Lord, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Do more. Go further. Do more. Turn many to righteousness. Turn many to Jesus. Turn many to Jesus. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the anointing. The oil. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Use it for your glory. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, receive power, receive power. I am the Lord, I am the Lord. You deserve the glory. Holy Ghost, Lord, we lift our hands to worship as we bless your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Receive the anointing. There is no one else. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. You are
Don't be left out. Lift up your hands and receive the Holy Spirit. He's all over this place. I don't even need to lay hands on you. Some of you are receiving the touch of God right where you are. All over this place. Receive it all the way to the back. God is touching you. The fire of God. The unction of God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Receive. The Spirit of God has made me. His breath has given me life. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled. Yes. Yes. Surely the presence. Surely the presence. Surely the presence. Surely the presence is here. The power of God. Touch. Jesus. Jesus. When the Holy Spirit touches some people, they start crying. All through the scriptures, we see the prophet Elijah. Elisha began to cry. He said, I weep because I know what you will do to the people of Israel. And the Holy Spirit brings tears to our eyes and touches our heart for his people and the burden for his people. Some people fall down. When the, the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, he turned and said, I am he. And suddenly the people fell to their feet. And that's the power of God. That's the power of God. 
That's the power of God. Don't be surprised. Some people laugh. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in righteousness, peace, and joy. When the spirit of joy comes upon people, they start laughing. And that spirit is here today. And you can hear them laughing in the Holy Ghost. Laughing in the Holy Ghost. Receive that spirit. Receive that spirit. Receive it. All over this place, lift your hands and receive the spirit of joy. Receive the spirit of joy. Receive it right now. I see waves and clouds in the spirit running all through this cathedral. You're receiving power. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is visiting us. The Holy Spirit is transforming us. The Holy Spirit is changing us. You receive joy. You receive joy. When, when some people get touched by the Holy Spirit, they begin to shake. They begin to shake. They begin to shake. Jeremiah said, I'm the Lord. Do you not tremble in my presence? Do you not shake in my presence? It's the power of God. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Paul writes and says, the manifestation is given to every man to profit with all. For the common good of the church, the blessing of God, His manifestation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All of us, bring them to me. Bring them to me. Bring them to me. God is touching them. All over this place, lift your hands. I sense the presence of God. Are you ready? The Holy Spirit is about to move all over this place. From the front to the back. All the way upstairs, the power of God is here. There's a wave of glory. There's a wave of glory. Are you ready? It's coming. It's coming at you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive the touch of the Holy Ghost. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. Angels. Look, God is touching her. God is touching her. Look, God is... I need an usher. God is touching her. I need an usher. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Who's hungry for the Holy Spirit? Who's hungry for an outpouring of the power of God? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Spirit, move. Spirit, move. Send us out, we will go. Send us out, we will go. Spirit will come. Lift your hands with me. Lift your hands with me. The Spirit will come. Transform. I see a cloud over in this section. Lift your hands in this section and receive. As many as are hungry, be filled with the Holy Ghost. For blessed are those who hunger and thirst, they shall be filled. Receive the Holy Spirit, be changed. Be changed, that's the power of God. I need an usher. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Be touched. Be touched. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Spirit. Move. Move, Spirit, move. Move, spirit, move. Move, spirit, move. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do, Holy Spirit. Do what you want to do, Holy Spirit. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your Oh, God is touching these guys on stage. I feel the power of God. Be anointed. Be anointed. <laughs>
be seen at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence, Lord. That's where I always want to be. Thank you for your anointing, Lord. Thank you for your anointing. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour out your spirit, Lord. How we love your presence. How we love your presence. How we love your presence. Do you love his presence? Fire ala la mani akete no ni ala la mati pale gaza pale ando do bosi ata kemoli ando do bodi agara baba miano falia thank you Holy Spirit I I chains are being broken this is what I hear in the spirit chains are being broken lift your hands chains whatever held you bound is being broken. Whoever held you bound is being broken. Every demonic power in your life is broken in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. And be not drunk with wine. Where it is excess. But be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Your chains are broken by the power and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands my brother. I sense the Holy Spirit is touching you. <laughs> oh Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your blessing. He poured the oil and he poured the wine. Receive the oil of the Holy Ghost. Receive the oil of the Holy Spirit. I sense his power so strong. I sense his power so strong. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, the blood of 